Hello students, um, hope your coronacation is going well. Um, the purpose of this video will be to talk about how the 1920s were not such a great time in American history for a variety of reasons. We've talked about previously how there was an increase in leisure time. Uh, we've talked about the prohibition. Now we're going to look at sort of the dark side of the 1920s. All right, so the 1920s, um, while often portrayed as somewhat of a golden age, does have a number of reasons why it maybe wasn't the best time culturally in America. Uh, we need to keep in mind things like segregation were still uh, very rampant. Um, and obviously, the 1920s also leads way to the Great Depression in the next decade. Uh, but let's take a look at a couple of reasons why the 20s weren't so great. Um, the first major event we need to understand is the Red Scare of the 1920s. Uh, this event was spurred on by the Russian Revolution, which occurred at the tail end of World War I in Russia, where a group of radical communist Bolsheviks overthrew the government. And... In much of Europe and in the United States, there was a fear that this would continue to um, spread into the United States and that these radical communists would be a threat to the United States. Now, there were, in fact, people at this time who were communists and there were other groups known as anarchists. Um, some of these groups have been tied to labor groups in the past. Um, and there were a few terror attacks. In 1919, there were 36 mail bombs that were delivered to prominent figures and politicians. And this led to a sort of hysteria that there were communists everywhere. Um, this led to a number of federal raids by the FBI and also the deportation of a lot of immigrants, some who may have been a threat to America and many who probably weren't. So the 1920s resulted in a rise of nativism and sort of a distrust of immigrants, particularly from Eastern Europe and from Italy. Uh, keep in mind that uh, during the Prohibition, there was also this view that many Italians were associated with um, organized crime. And so in 1925, the quota system came into being. The quota system put a limit on the number of immigrants that we would allow in the country each year. And it did so sort of on a already here basis. So whatever percentage of people were already living in America were the percentage of people that we would allow in in the following year due to the quota. So the idea was to kind of maintain um, our, our diversity where it was at. Uh, another after effect of the Red Scare besides the quota was the trial of two Italian immigrants known as Sacco and Vanzetti. Uh, what occurred to them is one of their factory bosses was murdered, and nobody knew who was responsible, but Sacco and Vanzetti were known to attend um, meetings of this group called Anarchists, and that was really enough proof to have these two guys convicted by the state of Massachusetts um, and be sentenced to execute sentenced to be executed. Uh, so Sacco and Vanzetti kind of represent this idea that you know, nativism and hysteria could kind of have people found guilty who shouldn't be found guilty um, and was also sort of, uh, you know, was obviously a uh, injustice in history. Besides um, quotas and nativism, uh, racial tensions also heightened in the 1920s. So we've discussed before how the Harlem Renaissance was occurring and there was the Great Migration. There was also a lot of counter reaction to the great migration where places in the north started to become much more uh, racially hostile so not only was nativism on the rise but also so was racism and the kkk grew in popularity um, in places that we would not even necessarily consider to be the south such as uh, indiana um, some sections of Indiana, over 24% of residents identified as being members to the KKK. Um, so the KKK grew in popularity, and in part it was a reaction of racist white people against black people moving to the north, but it was also 
um, viewed as a means of getting at immigrants. So nativism also became part of the KKK's rhetoric um, at this time. The KKK even produced a movie known as The Birth of a Nation, which kind of talked about um, the rise of the clan after um, the fall of the Confederacy. And so there was that. There was also a lot of, you know, terrible race riots in the 1920s. Um, the most significant being the Tulsa race riot, uh, where uh, hundreds of African Americans were attacked and killed. Um, some of them thrown in unmarked graves, and also um, the entire community of Tulsa, where black people lived, were destroyed. Uh, I have a poem here from Claude McKay, Harlem Renaissance uh, poet. He says, if we die, let it not be like hogs hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, marking their mock of our accursed lot. If we had if we must die, oh, let us die, nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us brave, and for thousand blows deal one death blow. What Though before us lies the open grave, like men will face the murderous cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. So Claude McKay, an African-American, uh, is advocating this idea that African Americans need to fight back against the violence that they saw. Um, and there were numerous events, Tulsa not being the only one. There were a lot of race riots, including events that happened in Chicago and Springfield, Illinois. So there was a lot of racial tension as well as anti-immigrant sentiment at this time. Um, another significant trial, we've talked about Sacco and Vizzetti was there was also the sort of reaction against modernist thinking that occurred in parts of America. And probably the event that classified this most was the Scopes trial, which was about the teaching of evolution in school. You know, Darwin's concept had been around for a while. Science teachers were teaching this as a concept, but in states like Tennessee, um, it was banned that it was seen as, you know, against the teachings of the Bible. So the Scopes trial involved a teacher uh, in Tennessee who taught the theory of evolution and was arrested for breaking the Tennessee state law. And it went to trial and it became this huge spectacle, not because like what the teacher did was necessarily all that radical, but it started this sort of dinner table conversation around the country as to whether or not evolution should be taught in schools or if we should stick to fundamental um, biblical instruction. Uh, in the end, Scopes was found guilty, but um, the kind of in the end, we know that modernism won out and evolution is more widely taught. But uh, in the 1920s, this was a debate that the country was having at the time. So, yeah, in review, in the 1920s, people were very fearful of communism um, I think that there are some comparisons that could be made to how people fear terror groups and immigrants from the Middle East uh, in the modern day. Back in the 1920s, it was sort of Eastern Europe. Um, Sacco and Vanzetti were executed mostly because of their nationality and political views. Are there any political views that would be dangerous to hold in the United States today that would be just too radical? Um, I don't know. So that's a question for discussion. Um, also, should creationism be taught in public schools? You know, there are these theories of intelligent design that say that uh, evolution does have gaps. Um, you know, should that be taught equally? What, what do we do for people who do not want to be taught evolutionary concepts in school? So uh, that's an ongoing thing. And overall, we could see that uh, the 1920s were not really a golden age. Um, when you dig into the racial tensions and the nativism, uh, America, while undergoing a period of prosperity for the 1920s, was not necessarily undergoing uh, a time of diversity. So it had its um, downsides too. So that's the 1920s. Uh, make sure you email any questions. Have a good day.